Hi everyone. You know, I'm Julia. I work with online ad advertising. And I want to start off by showing you this amazing number, 4,000. 4,000 is the number of ads every single one of us are exposed to, well, if you don't have an ad blocker, um, every day. So it's huge, a lot of ads around us. We see them every, like, everywhere on our way to work, on our mobile phones. So advertising is everywhere. So if we see that many ads, do we ever really pay attention to them? Does any of you know what this is? So for those who don't work in advertising, this was the first online banner ever published back in 1994. And I'm sure you cannot tell, but this is AT&T ad. Looks horrible for our eyes today. But the crazy thing about this banner is that 44% of the people who saw it clicked on it. And just to put that number in perspective, today, if our click rate is at 1%, we're happy. <laughs> but obviously, that was then, right? Long time ago, in a different century, when the internet looked like this, we were still very naive. <laughs> we really didn't know what it was coming. But, you know, with the evolution of the internet and also our taste in advertising, we also have the uh, appearance, the, in the invention of programmatic advertising. This great invention helped fund different publishers, different content creators across the globe. So by the end of my talk, hopefully you understand what programmatic is, how is it evolving, and how is the future looking. So it's good to start from the beginning, right? In the beginning of the internet, you know, back in that, those days when we saw this kind of websites, the, uh, there was a boom of um, publishers across the, the globe. So the number of publishers grew a lot quicker than the number of advertisers because advertisers didn't know what uh, online was. So that left publishers with a lot of unsold ad space. So the solution was to create what we call today ad networks. They still exist, by the way. These platforms, it was just platforms used to sell unsold inventory for different publishers for a very cheap price. So the idea with ad network is just buying cheap and having a lot of range. There's nothing cool about that, right? No transparency, no targeting, just buying cheap and get it all everywhere across the internet. As years pass by, uh, with better computing power, cheap data storage, and also advances in algorithms, together with the necessity of really streamlining the process for buying and selling advertising space, RTB, OpenRTB was invented. And OpenRTB is the first instance of programmatic. And OpenRTB stands for Open Real-Time Bidding. And why is it open? It's open because it's supposed to be open for everyone. So all publishers and as well as advertisers and buyers are able to plug in in this platform. And in this platform, there are two core pillars. In one side, on the publisher side, there is a supply side platform. And on the advertiser side, we have the demand side platform. And these two platforms they get together and speak with each other using what we call the RDB protocol. And the idea is very simple, is that with real-time bidding, a buyer can bid on an advertising space in real time, and if the bid is won, the publisher will automatically display the advertiser's ad. So very simple. But the core of this process is the auction, right? So the transaction between the publisher and advertiser are like a financial market, very, very similar to financial markets, is like an on-spot auction. In a little more, more detail, what happens is, whenever there's a page load, the publisher offers an impression, the ad space, via the SSP to the DSP, who receives that ad space offer, 
and then passes it on to all the advertisers on its platform. And then asks all the buyers on the platform if there's anyone interested on that particular ad space. And all buyers that said, OK, yes, I'm interested, they send, they pass back a bid, a bid value, which is the value of that impressions for them. The DSP then packages all these values and passes to the SSP back. And the SSP then decides what is the, the highest, um, the winning bid. Publisher then will definitely, dis they'll have to display the winner's ad. The core of the process, like again, like I said, is the auction process. And there are two main types of auction. For the longest time, the second price auction was a standard for online advertising trading. Because Yahoo and Google made this type of auction very popular when they created paid search results. We don't know the reason why they decided for that. There are many scientific papers written about that, but the, you know, in, in the end, it really worked in the beginning. And the special thing about this auction is that the buyer, they don't pay what they're actually bidding. They pay the second highest bid plus one cent. And this is very important <coughs> because that should encourage buyers to really bid very high when they want to win an impression, when that user value valu valuable to them. But the downside of that is that it's not very transparent, neither for the publisher, neither for the buyer. Because when this happens, there is a blind auction, so the buyers don't know what the others are bidding. And the publisher don't know how much the buyer was willing to pay for that impression. That gives a lot of transparency in the supply chain. And you know, a couple of years ago, there were a lot of, if everything, everyone was playing by the game, there wouldn't be a problem. But we know that's not what happened. And we estimate that out of 100 francs that was spent by the buyers, only 40 got to the publisher in the end. So there were a lot of uh, millions, uh, millions of francs, dollars, that were lost in the supply chain by third parties. So there was a huge need in the market to make this auction process a little bit more transparent. So most, a lot of different exchanges, SSPs, started to change into first price. And in first price world, what you bid is what you pay. So that makes the competition between advertisers and publishers a lot easier. And Google was the only one who remained on second price because it gave them a little bit of advantage over the years, up until two months ago, when they decided as well they're going to shift to first price. But the only thing is very good for publishers, but it's a little bit of downside for advertisers because now they really have to buy smart, even smarter. They need to really bid when they want to win an impression, but not too high so they don't waste the advertising budget. So just so you know, open RTB and this process is really the core of programmatic advertising. But nowadays, we trade programmatically in different ways that can, that can bypass this open, open auction process. We nowadays, we can make deals directly with the buyers uh, that we, for a fixed price, so we don't have to go over the bidding. Uh, we can also make a private marketplace, not only for all the buyers or all the publishers, but only between a publisher and a selected group of buyers. So now that you know that what programmatic is, hopefully, um, you should understand why it got so big. And the core idea about in programmatic is not about buying cheap, it is really buying smart. Because with that technology, buyers can really buy according to their goals. So they will only pay for the impressions that they're really interested on. So you can really reach your user at the time they want, when do you want, and where do you want. And the programmatic technology is already spreading across different media. So you can use the same um, technology platforms to buy nowadays not only display ads, but audio ads, video ads, even TV and digital out of home. So now that you know, programmatic is getting more popular, in some mature countries like the US, 75% or of the ad spent is already like trade programmatically. Don't worry, I have some good news for you. With ad tech evolving, so is gonna be the user experience. There are three big changes in programmatic that will really make the life of the user a lot better. 
and I'll start by telling you the first one. The first one is, believe it or not, advertising is becoming more native. Sounds weird, but you know, there's more and more uh, new creative technologies out there. They're really bringing high, high impact uh, and non-intrusive advertising, and they're becoming more and more popular. The second big trend is native advertising, which became very popular and very famous uh, because of Facebook, is really now getting traction in all the, with all the publishers, so no social publish publishers. Last year, we saw a growth of 25% on native advertising, and we really see this trend is here to stay. All in all, all I want to say is that advertising is getting more, less intrusive and a little bit more creative. The second key trend is programmatic is also getting a lot more data-driven, which is the whole point of buying programmatic, by the way. But now we're using consented user data, it's very important, and also lookalike modeling to really make sure that we deliver the meaningful and targeted messages for the user. So these give us at least the hope that digital ads will become more relevant and better time and better placed and not such intrusive and disruptive experience for the audience. Um, last but definitely not least, I can finally say that programmatic is becoming more controlled. And what does it mean? First, I have to make a confession that the biggest problem with programmatic and online advertising in general is data leakage. Um, OpenRTB, when it was created and back you know, a few years ago, not, not that long ago, like last year, was really the wild west of the internet. The data flows were crazy. Nobody knew what the data was coming from, when it was going. It was really shared across different parties. Uh, and the user, of course, didn't know about this. And the, the worst thing is that nobody in the industry ever made any steps toward making this process um, any better. The good thing is that last year, legislation came. And now we're forced to work better. And legislation came really to put the user in the center of the decision-making process. And the publisher now can decide with whom they share their data, but it's ultimately from, for, for the user to decide whether or not the publisher will share the data. So what I tell you is, we made a lot of mistakes, right? But it's really going, not because we wanted, but now we're forced to make it a lot better. And increasing control and transparency are really the key trends for advertising. And putting the control back to the only ones that really matter in the supply chain, the user and the publisher. So I just wanted to finish up by saying something that programmatic is really evolved. And you can see now that we made a lot of mistakes. And if I want to show you about the data leakage, which had to be a different presentation because it's really crazy. But whether you li like advertising or not, we should not forget that it is really the core and the lifeblood of the open internet. And we're now finally able to see a more diverse, hopefully, but definitely a more ethical advertising ecosystem that we can ensure to continue to, to to provide funds to the open internet, ensuring that content remains free and accessible to everyone. Thank you.